why is it that Punjabis will never progress? <laughs> I'll tell you the answer to that. Because there's too much fucking jealousy. There's way too much jealousy. Everyone wants to be somebody. Everyone wants to be a Pradhan of something. Everyone wants power. So, um, you know, what they try to do is they can't work in harmony with everyone else. So what they try to do is they try to be bigger and better. But what they don't realise is they're falling under the same British rule thing, innit? Their, their policy, divide and conquer. I mean, you don't need the British to do that. You've got them, these idiots doing it themselves, you know? Um, these so-called uh, wannabes, you know? So we're going to start talking about this so-called post that's been going out by apparent members of the Shia the Punjab in Birmingham now, yeah? Who have called a group uh, on Instagram called Shia the Punjab UK. Now, when I say UK, I think we all know you guys are just in the Midlands and nowhere else. You understand? Um, I wasn't actually going to say anything first, to be honest with you, because I was going to leave it to the documentary, and I will go to the documentary um, about this a little bit more in detail. Okay? So I've just gotten off the phone with a few of the lads and I'm like, what the fuck's all this bullshit you lot are spreading, yeah? Right? Because clearly they've forgotten all the messages that they've been sending me and every every single conversation we've had in the past, you understand, regarding joint um, programs and bits of bobs. You know, um, it just makes you think like people can just literally within seconds, within minutes, can just turn sides, you understand? So if we were to kind of show out all these messages and everything regarding SP programs, SP stalls being set up here, you know, people messaging me saying, oh, we're doing the SP program up there, can you come and bring the SP boys from London with you, you know, things like that, yeah? So, you know, and suddenly now it's just like, oh, we don't know who this guy is. So let's talk about what, are, what the original plan was going to be. The original plan was going to be in the documentary. I was just going to mention, I thought, you know what, Jal Tika, everyone's had their um, tiffs here and there, yeah. Um, back then in the day, we all still fall under the same umbrella, you know. When uh, when it comes to the crunch, you understand, we all, all unite, and uh, you know our agenda is the same, pretty much. You know, we want we want to protect the community. That's what we do. You understand? But how are you going to protect the community when you're so up your own fucking ass? Like. I didn't want to say anything. Like I've, I've always, always thought that the Birmingham lot are very, very different to the London lot, yeah? And um, the people from London will know what I'm talking about. The Birmingham lot will probably disagree, you understand? Because um, to them, somebody that is a known face is someone that's got a lot of friends. So if you've got a lot of friends and you walk into a pub and everyone's like, yeah, all right, mate. No, oh, he's a fucking known face. You know, he's a bit of a bad boy. He's a fucking legend, this guy. You understand? Over here in London, it's a little bit different, boys. You know, no disrespect to you guys, but over here, you've got to fucking earn it. You've got to earn the respect. It doesn't just fucking hang around. Uh, it doesn't start by hanging around with groups of fucking 10, 15 people. You know, people think you're a bad boy because you've got a large number with you. You know, over here, it's hard work. And, um... You know, so what I was going to talk about is, you know, there was been, there's been issues with the Birmingham lot from day one, you understand? Because they've always tried to feel that there's a little bit more power. Um, it's, a, it's been a power struggle, but from our end, it's never been like that. It's always been, it's all been good. I'll give you an example, yeah? I'm not going to mention any names, but this, these people know who they are. So I think it might have been about 10 years ago. We've gone to, I think it's Hyde Park. And... Um, so I, uh, I was with my boys, we were basically just chilling out on one side and then we see these big group of lads just standing in a, like a line, you know, just in a semi-circle and uh, wearing the shit up and job t-shirts and everything, yeah, the banners up. I'm not going to lie to you, they looked apart. Our, my guys just normal, just, uh, you know, nuts, like screws loose in the head, kind of normal guys, yeah? Morning and stuff like that. Anyway, these guys... Were mainly sings of that. Yeah, a few, few more, ne? Um, but the rest were sings. And uh, so I've gone and approached them and I've turned around and said, I said, look, um, I said, we're the London lot. You know, just want to say, you know, enough respect for coming down. You know, anything you guys ever need, um, let me know. You know, anything that we can do for you boys here, let us know. You know, saves you guys coming down and vice versa, yeah? So 
this particular guy turned around and said to me, listen mate, before you talk to me, yeah, cover your fucking head. And I was like, but the way the way he sort of said it was like kind of trying to mug me off, yeah? And I didn't really like the way he spoke. I was young. I was only young. And it could have even been more than 10 years ago, to be honest with you. Maybe even 15. And um, so I was like, who the fuck do you think you're talking to? So I fucking lost it. I, I used to be really hot-headed before, you know? So I fucking lost it. And I started fucking, you know, having it. I said, let's fucking have it, you know? I said, fuck you, I'll fuck you, I'll fuck all your boys. So I, you could tell that I was getting fucking, but, you know, when I used to go crazy, I used to go crazy, yeah? Um, nowadays I'm a lot more calmer and um, the funniest thing is not one person and I swear on the Guru Granth Sahib not one person from all of those 30 guys stepped forward to see if everything's okay or like at least just come forward or oh, is everything alright bruv you know what's wrong or you know just try and, try and fucking come forward for a fight if not anything else and my boys obviously seen the commotion they've come running over like it's about to kick off so I'm like, whoa, 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 it's cool. You know what I mean? And I turned around and I said to the next mate, I said, listen, you see this? I said, this is how we roll. You understand? I said, all our brothers, we stick together. I said, you're Bundy, you lot are just here to look good. You understand? Yeah, but you can't do fuck all, right? Now, we all know, every time something's happened in London, where has the Birmingham SP been? Nowhere. Now, they're making it out as if this is the funniest thing now. Now, I'm going to hold you guys to this now, yeah? If you lot are watching, I'm sure you guys are going to watch this, yeah? So, apparently, we, I, am nothing to do with the the West London or the London Shere Punjab, right? And they have no acknowledgement of me. And apparently, they've got a big, they've got a big uh, camp here in, in Southall, yeah? So, there's apparently quite a lot of them. So, guys, do me a favour. If you guys can tell me who these people are, name me at least one person. Forget, like, 10, 15, 20. Name me one person, just one person that is associated with the Shere Punjab that's from around these areas but is connected with the Birmingham SP. Not one person. You understand? Every single Banda that is part of the SP here, yeah, part of all of our family, yeah, is with us. No one is with you. So when you're saying you're trying to make it out as if you're this big international thing, nah. Let's get one thing clear, yeah? The London SP lot, yeah, not only do they do we have Bande here, we've got SP all over the country. You understand? SP all over the country. Right? Now with the Birmingham SP, they cannot they cannot say that. They've only got people in Birmingham. They do not have Bande in London. They do not have people up north. They do not have people down south, down west, north. They don't. They've only got them in the Midlands. And that's it. If if there is any, please, guys, I am asking you guys to put these names forward on your web page or whatever it is that you guys have got. Put this up here. You understand? So I've gotten off the phone with a few of the lads. And um, they're basically, this is the Birmingham lot, yeah? And I'm saying, what the fuck are you got playing at? Um, they've turned around and said to me that uh, this is obviously nothing to do with them. That is apparently the guys that are controlling the Instagram page, yeah? And the people that are controlling the Instagram page are um, the older lot, apparently. And they've been getting a lot of pressure from uh, fucking Mao Kang and his crew, yeah? <laughs> right? Chatting shit. So, but let me tell you a lot. You see what it is? I don't like to, um, I don't like to air all the laundry in public, but I'm going to tell you a few truths now, right? Have you noticed me going out of my way and posting stuff about any of these lot. No. There's so many people trying to jump on the bandwagon, trying to gain recognition. These people were nobodies and suddenly they're trying to be over somebody's overnight, yeah? But it's cool. It's jealousy is a very big thing. You understand? Know, last time I gave you a list and we will go over that list again uh, in the documentary where we are talking about um, the things that I've managed to do. You know, me and my brothers around here have managed to do and um, where were these fellas? They're only good at doing stalls. That's what they're good at. But realistically, yeah? Okay, the back in the days, the older lot, they'd done something, yeah? But they were nowhere near as how, how ruthless the London lot or whatever were, you know? Um, but like I said, 
they are only good at pretty much doing stalls. You know, every event you go to, you know, they'll have stalls, literature set up and this and that. When do you ever hear of them actually doing anything? Never. You know, um, so you've got all the older lot trying to be Pradhans and that, yeah? But it's cool to see Kadija, you lot do what you need to do there, you understand? Um, but that's all you guys are ever good for, you know, to be honest with you, it's just fucking full of shit. You love to go to these little parties where all the older uncles are there and you feel like you're a bit of the don and then suddenly these younger guys come along and he just put you lot in your fucking place. I'll tell you where this all started from. This all started from a few years back, about 15 years ago. I put a post up on my Facebook and Bush commented on it, some stupid, some stupid childish comment. And I'm like, listen, I messaged him, private inbox him, and I'm like, bro, what are you doing in it? Why are you even commenting on my post? I said, I said, it's a stupid comment, you know, I've got to delete it now. You understand because it's a stupid comment you know like you're grown bunda now you know just try and change yourself you know with age you know instead of fucking trying to still be that you're fucking young tomorrow my time's gonna come i'm gonna have to take a back foot you understand but these bundas still think they're fucking 18 years old and um so anyway i blocked him because i blocked him he didn't like it um but jello it's cool isn't it? It's, it is it is one of those things in it you know um you know, too, too much ego, that's what it is. You know, this is why I say to you people, don't let it get to you. You know, it's like these bundy have got too much fucking ego. They're still living by the past, thinking that they're fucking, they're something when clearly, yeah, maybe back in the days they were, but not now. You know, saying? even then, going back then, back in the days, going around about their era, if they were to come and meet some of the fucking bundy that were down here, I'm telling you one thing, they, it's always been on another level down London, always. You understand? Know it's always on another level and um, I'm not saying the people at Midlands are fucking idiots you understand but I'm just saying it's a, li a lot tougher over here you understand to make a name to, to make an impact to do anything you know to get results it's always a lot tougher you know and um, over there everything can be done internally when you know someone you don't even need to go to the police everything is sorted out over here it's tough you know but um, yeah so going back about what I spoke to a few of the lads was, I told them straight, I said, listen, I said, if this is how you want to go, yeah, because I said, let's get one thing clear, you lot don't have Bundy down here, nor do you have them anywhere else in England, you've only got them in the Midlands, yeah, I said, our Bundy are all over the country, forget all over the country, they're fucking, we've got Bundy in other countries, you understand, and um, so I made it clear to them, I said, from now on, any time you fuckers ever come and try and do a stall, or anything in London, anything, associating with the Sherry Punjab, yeah, and, and you, you fucking challenge me on this, yeah, any time you lot do anything over here, if I fucking catch you lot, and I catch you lot doing it, you're going to get fucked, you understand, me and my boys will turn up, and we'll fucking run you lot out, you understand, you lot do all the fucking stalls and literature you want to do at Birmingham, don't be doing no fucking shit here, it's simple, you want to come here in Hyde Park, yeah, chatting fucking shit, yeah, <laughs> yeah, do it somewhere else. Going back about the Hyde Park thing, so let's talk about it. So when that whole incident happened, he spoke to me like a fucking cunt because he goes, cover your head. And I was like, okay. As far as I was concerned, I didn't know there was a Maharaj DB. I didn't know there was a Guru Granth Sahib in that area. And after doing my research, I was right, there was none. So I go to him, you're saying it like, there's a there's a guru grand sahib above the beard here. Yeah? I said, but what the fuck? Okay, okay, fair enough. Some people do it out of respect for the shaheeds. Yeah, I'm totally fine. I understand that. You know, I was still young. You know, I just come into the crew, and um, as you know, I was I've been in it for a few years, but I was still young. I was immature. I've only started to change my ways in the last seven eight years. You understand? Before that, I've all, I always was immature. I didn't give a shit. I never, I never done anything um, back in the days um, for. Uh, any other reason apart from satisfaction of just getting results, you understand? I would bully a bully and I would take on challenges that were way, way above what I could manage, you understand? And that was the reason why I did a lot of things back in the days. Yes, religion was a part of it as well, you understand? But that wasn't the main reason, you know? And um, so, uh, you know, I never used to go to the Gurdwara, I never used to do any of that, you understand? Um, only time I ever would go to the good well, like, if it was a part going on or something like that, but apart from that, never. So, yeah, like, what fucking idiots, man. Like, seriously, guys, you lot of fucking idiots. Like, you're burning your own fucking bridges. Like, down in Midlands, 
the Birmingham SP have got a really fucking dead name. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I think maybe that's why you guys are trying to jump on a bandwagon now. You understand? I've, I've managed to get the Shared Open Job name back up there again. Yeah? And now that it's up there, it's like, oh, you know, we don't need him. Don't work that way. Yeah? You're not the boss. I'm not the boss. There is no boss. If we want to talk about statistics, yeah, then Maharaja Ranjit Singh was the one that who created, yeah, Shere, um, Shere Punjab. So it weren't any of us lot. So technically speaking, even you guys are not part of the Shere Punjab, if that's how you want to go. There is no application forms. There is no nothing. There is no boss, yeah. Being part of the Shere Punjab is being part of a community. You understand? A group of friends that are basically have the same agenda, the same cause, and that is being there to protect, you understand, protect the community and you know, um, deal with deal with people that are doing wrong and correct it. How you do it is up to you lot, you understand? Now they're talking about stuff like substances and stuff like that. Uh, realistically, guys, how many of you boys from up Birmingham have bought steroids from my friends up here? Like, realistically, come on, you know? Like, seriously, do you want me to start giving names? You know, and if we were to start talking about, um, you know, how good they are for twisting words, oh, I'll put up a post saying, it's okay to sell drugs from home, but it's not okay to do it from outside. They're very, very good at manipulating words. You understand? You see who's talking there? That is Mao Singh talking. Mao Killer, yeah? That's him talking, the fucking man. Um, you know? But what it is, is they're seeing it as a glass half empty rather than glass half full. Because what they don't see is the message behind that is don't be doing drugs on the streets. Because when you're doing it on the streets, you're allowing people to think it's okay. You understand? People will do bad stuff no matter what. You understand? People will commit murders. They will commit fucking all sorts of fucking crimes, yeah? But they won't do it in public. You understand? Unless it's heated. Like if it's a heated moment, then yes. But they will do it behind closed doors. You understand? Um, and, you know, and, and at the end of the day, the reason why they will do it behind closed doors is because they know that it's not normal. It's not right to do it out in the open. So, you know, people are going to do drugs. They will do drugs no matter what. And if they are going to do it, that's fine. You do it, do it behind your fucking closed doors. Don't be letting this younger generation now that's out there thinking that it's okay to do that. You understand? But no, they don't want to see that. They don't want to see that message, do they? They want to see it's okay because apparently Injection said you can do drugs. He's given it the go ahead. Yeah, you can do it, but you can do it from home. Like, seriously, guys, like, fucking hell. Like, I'm trying to live a normal life here, yeah? And you lot are bringing me so much fucking positive publicity. I can't thank you lot as much, but, like, I think I'm getting phone calls from up here, from London boys, and saying, who the fuck are these Birmingham lot? Let's go there and move to them right now. You guys, you know if that happens, yeah? you right. None of you lot are fighters, you understand? You lot look good there in your t-shirts and this and that, yeah. None of you lot are fighters. So let's get that straight, you understand? Um, there's nothing that you lot can actually do, you understand, apart from give out leaflets. Pencil pushers, that's that's what the London lot call you guys, pencil pushers. Not my words, it's the London lot, yeah? They call you lot pencil pushers. So, um, you know, and at the end of the day, you guys have now just, just fucking dug yourself a hole because I was actually going to mention you know, and publicly that guys, we are all still together. Because I thought, you know what, fuck it, like, as much as bad publicity you lot are getting for being bums, yeah? You know what they class you lot as? Is, you know, like, um, you know, over here, Slough police are only known for doing driving crime because they're not good at doing anything else. So, that they get fucking dissed by the Metropolitan all the time because they're no good for nothing. Um, you know, I let you guys carry on doing your stalls over here and all that. I'll let you lot do it because I'm like, whatever. First, people saying, why are these lot doing it over here? This is our area. We should be doing it. And I'm like, don't, it's cool. Let them. You understand? If they're doing it, it's cool. You know? Um, I'm going to mention uh, one incident now. Okay? Um, we're gonna, this is, I think this was about, um, about six weeks ago. I think it was. <clears throat> so, um, Something happened on the internet, I forgot what it was, where somebody had said something, I think it was, um, to do, I think there were some messages going out of some boy saying stuff to these girls or whatever, yeah? Some Pakistani fellow, I think he was, I'm not sure. And um, so he was saying stuff to these girls or whatever. They found out. Anyway, then what's happened is 
I got the address. Now, you guys probably remember that post that they put up on their group. And I posted it on there, the address. No one else got the address. None of them got the address. I'm having to do work here, sitting in London, for these Bundy that are in Birmingham. Now, the guy was based from there. Not one person got the address. You understand? So I got the address. Just so these guys can go and talk to that person, nothing else. You understand? Just to find out why it is that he's doing what he's doing. So, anyway... few of the guys ended up going there in the evening, late at night. What they were going there to do, I don't know. This is the Birmingham SP that's connected with the London SP, but they're in Birmingham, yeah? So this has got nothing to do with the Birmingham SP. This is this is the Birmingham SP. Oh, so this is the, the Birmingham SP, but scattered around the outsides of Birmingham, but they are connected with the London SP, yeah? So this is not the, the social media lot, right? So anyway... So these boys, now they're serious boys, yeah? They're not no pencil pushers. So they've gone down there in the evening. And, um, police nicked them. They got nicked with weapons and all sorts, yeah? At that house address. Now, we found out afterwards why they got nicked. The reason why they got nicked is because <laughs> the Birmingham SP law decided to go there in the daytime three car loads yeah blatantly come out yeah huffing and puffing just trying to show Bundy that we're here we're here we're gonna deal with you lot now I'm not condoning any of this yeah I'm not condoning that it's okay to do use violence or anything but if you are going to do something like that in the future, going by what I have seen, not by what I've done or what I am actually advising people to do, going by what I have seen, yeah, what people would normally do is they will turn up in the middle of the night and they do what they've what they got to do and boom, and that's it, yeah. They wouldn't come there in the daytime, hot themselves up, show their faces all on camera and in front of witnesses. Apparently there was fucking shitloads of people coming out of their houses and that, yeah? They all come in there, huffing and puffing outside the geezer's house. You know what I'm saying? And uh, baiting themselves up. So not what they've done is, they didn't do anything. They just basically made the guy feel a bit intimidated, yeah? Now what that's gone and done is, it's given the guy a head start to call the feds. So when the guys, the serious guys, yeah, our guys have gone there in the evening, they've got nicked. None of them boys would have got nicked, you understand, if these guys hadn't gone there in the daytime and hotted them up. See, that's the difference between serious Monday and pencil pushers, you understand? Um, you know, they, they're talking about fucking drugs, like, like, come on. I think all the L older lot, they know exactly how all the older SP lot back in the days made their money, you understand? We all know how they made their money, yeah? It was all fucking heroin and coke, wasn't it? So, let's not fucking go there. You understand? Because we all got a lot of dirt on each other. You understand? You guys made a bit of name and you thought, okay, let's start bringing in Akta, yeah? You're forgetting the bundle that you lot used to buy the Akta off. I know them very well. You understand? So, um, yeah, so let's leave it. Now, it's not going to be a mudslinging competition, but... Um, you know, it just, it just, sometimes it just makes you think like, what, what, like you guys had dug yourselves a fucking hole as it was, and now you just ruined it even more for yourself. For what? For listening to these fucking fuddus, these little cry that are on the fucking internet, you understand? Um, you know, it's just like now you guys can't even come here and do any fucking stalls. You can't do anything here. What are you going to fucking do here? You guys are not going to do anything. You guys will not do anything. I'm telling you that now. You understand? Right, we've got our we've got our main Bundy spread over all up north, and the worst thing is that everyone's just trying to fucking slate them. So I wouldn't be surprised if this little kind of this little hate council thing that's been set up is is all set up by the Birmingham SP for being jealous. You understand? Like you know, there's issues about with Deepa. You understand from Sikh youth now. 
I'm not going to lie, um, I've never really known the Banda before, only till recently. And I'll tell you one thing, from what I've heard from day one, he's done not even a hundred times more, he's done a thousand times more stuff for the Sikh youth and for the, the Punjabi community, yeah, whether you're Sikh, Hindu, or anyone, a Muslim, anyone, yeah, he's done stuff for the Punjabi community more than any of the SP boys at London. You understand? This Banda has been spending money out of his own pocket, driving back and forth, up and down, sorting out fucking cases. Every single time I speak to him, he's coming down here to sort this case out, to sort that case out. Who's paying for it? None of you lot are paying for it. You understand what I'm saying? Where were you lot when that fucking girl went missing in, in East London? Okay, fair enough. There was rumours going around that apparently she'd run off with a gala, but who gives a shit? The bottom line is, Sikh youth had the right intention. They went there to find her. Where the fuck was you lot? You understand what I'm saying? When this happened in East London, where were you lot? You understand? The only Bundy that actually went down there was the London boys and a Sikh youth boys. You understand? So where were you lot? Everyone's quick at fucking slating deep behind this and that, yeah? They were saying we're going to run him out of town. You know, we're gonna, listen, I don't know who you lot are fucking thinking you lot are, godfathers or whatever, yeah? You can't run. <laughs> listen, I've got a history of running Bundy out of fucking town. You understand? When you try coming on my level, then you talk about running Bundy out of town. You understand? I've physically made people leave the country and not come back for years and years and years, yeah? So when you get to that level, then we'll talk. You understand? So, um, yeah, running people out of fucking town. You know when a Bundy's trying to do good, yeah? You see the big man upstairs? He's got his back. You know, no matter what, all these little cockroaches that are going to come and go with their little hate campaigns, they can carry on. But <clears throat> the main shit is always going to be solid. No matter what, them, them boys, they're going to stay solid. That, that unity is going to stay solid, no matter what. No matter how much these fuckers try breaking. And you know what? <clears throat> I'm actually not even... <laughs> I'm actually not even... Um, like, to be honest with you, even the slightest bit stressed out. Like, you guys can see I'm chilling out it. I'm on my bed. I'm chilling out watching a movie, you know? And... Um, you know, you don't see me huffing and puffing in the fucking car or the van or anything, you know, about this. Um, you know, I was talking to one of my mates earlier on and I said, you know what? The thing is that what people see with their eyes is more powerful than what they're hearing with their ears. You understand? And what people around here see with their eyes is that there is no Birmingham SP around here. I'm, unfortunately, I'm sorry to disappoint you guys. Um, it has only been our slot from day one. And, um, yeah, it's, it has only been our slot. You understand? So, um, we don't really sit here and uh, try to gain recognition by doing stalls and giving out leaflets and shit like that. We actually don't give a fuck what actually people think about the Shere Punjab over here. You understand? You know, most of the people in here, over here, are money. Most of them are criminals. But what they do in their own spare time, that's up to them. But the bottom line is, when it comes to the crunch, they're all under one umbrella. You understand? If there's a problem, they will always come out. And we don't ask them what they do for fucking, for a living, how they make their money. As far as we're concerned, when we need them, they are there. And that's it. What they do in their own personal life, is up to them, you understand? So, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, as long as they're not fucking, you know, um, paedophiles or fucking sex offenders and shit like that, um, but it is what it is, you understand? And, um, but, uh, yeah, guys, so that's basically it, you understand? That's basically it, you know? Um, but not really too fast. Can't really be asked, so, um, for those Bundy that think that they're going to try and get a name for just chatting shit, you guys carry on because you see what it is, is like I said before, we don't, we don't give a fuck. We will still carry on doing the work that we do. Do you know why? Because that's in our blood. It's warrior genetics. You understand? So when you've got those warrior genetics, you walk down the street and something happens, you have to intervene, you fucking sort it out and that's it. You understand? If, if you, if you ain't gonna sort it out, there's gotta be a really good reason, you understand, like that fucking motherfuckers, 
that was the fight that was happening um, with those Punjabis against Punjabis, yeah? And I just, I, I thought, you know what, I'm going to let them carry on because these motherfuckers, literally two years before that, got me done for a false drug, uh, firearms, not fucking firearms, uh, false firearms charge, you understand? And um, they basically, uh, they tried to uh, stitch me up and uh, saying that I pulled out a firearm <coughs> on them and threatened them, you understand? Um, and they were just coming out with loads of shit. And apparently, all were thrown out in court. But why the fuck am I going to help someone that's just blatantly just going to try to get me fucking put behind bars for five years for no reason? For what? Because they walked past my fucking house. And my dog was barking, and I fucking pulled him back to stop him from barking. You understand? Know, and instead, fucking, they put a fucking firearm charge on me. This is the kind of shit that you got to fucking put up with. You understand? Know, but it is what it is, isn't it? You understand? Know, now there's all this fucking, these fucking chodus saying there's some fucking Fudu documentary coming out on Monday. I tell you what, yeah, it, I tell you what, before you lot start releasing anything, yeah, first try to get me arrested for something that I've actually done. Because if I'm apparently guilty, then I'd be sitting in prison. I won't be lying on my bed here, yeah, fucking making videos. <laughs> yeah. So if there is some kind of charge and I'm guilty for something, then guys, make sure you definitely get me nicked, you understand? Get me arrested because... um I'd like to know if there's any victims out there. You understand what I'm saying? So, um, but yeah, all right, I'm gonna leave you guys to it. I think I've done your head enough. I'm gonna watch my movie now. <laughs>